WCN tours the Keystone State, taking you inside Pennsylvania's factories, museums, and historical sites. Hi, my name is John Burley. I'm president of Burley's Ring Supply. Our company specializes in the design, manufacture, and installation of ice rinks and inline rinks around the world. What we're going to show you today is how we take a pile of steel and let you into some of the secrets and some of the components and products that we make for this particular industry. Our company uh, specializes in taking the steel and manufacturing this into a dashboard system. A dashboard system is a wall around the ice rink that people get checked into in hockey games. It's just one of the small components that we manufacture in the overall big picture. Uh, the process involves basically taking some 2x4 steel resistant welded tubing, cutting it to length, and then fabricating it into a specific panel. In the ice rink business, our application requires that every dashboard system is custom made. For that, we have to build every product to the particular project. The process involves setting up a jig and using a cutoff saw with a dust collection system. The batching of the components is the first process where we cut all the steel to minimize labor. When we build a dashboard system, we first cut up all the steel in totality, and then we take those specific components and build them into a frame. The top saw is kind of loud to talk over. Okay, let's go over and take a look at the hardware. Another component that's real important to the tubing is the hardware that we use to assemble the panel and also the structural members that support it when it's mounted. The chop saw is one of the tools that we use with raw material preparation. Another tool that we use is what we call our iron worker. Our iron worker is a simple hydraulic press that we use for all our flat stock. It does all our shearing and punching. And uh, here we have a process where we're cutting base plates. And as you'll see later on, this goes into the bottom of the support that holds up the dashboard system. We build a dashboard system. These things have to be very, very strong. Not only do you have two people going at 20 to 30 miles an hour on ice skates that are 300 pounds and ugly and like to fight anyway, hitting into these dashboards, but we also got a 9,000 pound Zamboni, the ice resurfacing machine that people have a tendency to sometimes bounce off the walls. So we have to build these things super strong. And that's why all the steel that you're gonna see into this that takes place in the process. Right now, you know, from a standpoint of a company, the industry is very, very busy for us. They say out of the 54 major sports in the United States, ice hockey and inline hockey are the hottest two sports today. From the standpoint of a sales activity, sometimes we tell people we feel like a mosquito in a nudist colony. We're so busy here right now. After they cut these to specific length, they'll also put up another die set on the other side of the iron worker and they'll punch all the holes into it. The entire process is that we fabricate all the steel in totality and then the steel itself, because it's in a very harsh environmental condition, it's either galvanized or powder coated with a paint. Another aspect that's important then, in addition to the steel itself, is the hardware that we install on all the dashboard systems and I'll show you some of the hardware staging area. We make all our own hardware for the dashboard doors for both what we call the equipment gate which is the big gate where the ice resurfacing machine goes through and if you've seen a hockey game you know what I mean when I say Zamboni. There are other machines other than a Zamboni but anybody who mentions a Zamboni knows what we're talking about. All the hardware for the doors we make ourselves here as well. 
Uh, we found because of the rigorous demands of the frames themselves and, and the application that making our own hardware is really the only alternative we have. All our hardware is welded together and then bolts to the frames which you'll see in the finished assemblies. This also is a uh, given a electroplating as opposed to a galvanizing. The electroplating is a process of coating that you can control the millage of thickness very well. It doesn't create blobs like galvanizing would, and with the close tolerance requirements of hardware, with the bearings and things of that nature, the electrostatic uh, type coating is a very important process for us. And this is where we make all our own hardware. Let's come on over and I'll show you some finished frames. After they uh, get done cutting all the subcomponents, at that point they take the frames and assemble them. We set up a series of jigs to make sure that all the frames are exactly the same size, the same shape, and the tolerances that we need. We have a design philosophy from a company with all the different components that we have, be it from dasher boards to ring piping to refrigeration, pump skid, is that we believe in a philosophy of trying to factory fabricate as much as possible. We try to minimize field fabrication because we don't want to have to rely on the individual field supervisor's craftsmanship to make sure that the product we give to every customer is exactly the same. Not only that, but also we do business all over the world and to be field fabricating sometimes in a third world country is almost impossible. Matter of fact, just doing a simple installation in a third world country is sometimes impossible. Here we have the raw steel that they've cut earlier on and they have it jigged up into a table to assure its squareness and they'll tack weld that and then they'll weld all the joints and as you can see on all the connections, we, uh, we run them tight, grind them and create a full frame. Now these will be galvanized, an important aspect of the galvanizing process as well is when we dip these and hot dip galvanize them, they galvanize both inside and out. So an awful lot of care is given to where we place holes for ventilation so the galvanizing can go in and, and through the system. We also don't want to seal any of the tubes off in the galvanizing process because the tube being sealed and dumped into a hot vat of galvanized uh, zinc coating would explode on us. So ventilation is an important factor too. Okay, you're going to weld some table up here. One thing the welders do when they weld these frames is they're real careful as far as the process of where they're welding. When a weld has a cooling process, it, it has a tendency to shrink. And if they don't weld under a certain pattern, the frame can get pulled just from the shrinking action of the welding itself. There's a lot of things uh, as far as funny questions we get when people ask about what it takes to build an ice rink and you have to realize that an ice rink is literally almost a half acre of refrigerated area. And as big as and complex as it may seem, it's no much more complicated than the same refrigeration process of using a refrigerator at home. It involves the process of absorption and heat transfer and when you see the refrigeration system, which we'll take a walk through, you'll see that the process, while magnified dramatically, is essentially the same. Let's go uh, take a look at something else. Along the walk here, even though it doesn't apply to the dashboard systems, here's uh, another item that we manufacture. This is what they call a, uh, a snow melting pit coil, rather. And there's a pit that's located in the Zamboni room, and every time the Zamboni resurfaces an ice drink floor, they bring with it about 100 cubic feet or 200 of gallons of water in ice form off the ice sheet. And when they dump that snow, they need some place to dump it. Sometimes the resurfacing machines dump that snow outside. In a lot of applications today, what we do is put a pit indoors where the Zamboni will dump that snow indoors into a pit, which you'll see later on as well with the end of this video. But this coil has hot water that goes through it that helps accelerate the melting process of the snow. Let's walk over here and take a look at some of the other products that we do. We also manufacture the glass support that are top of the dashboard. If you've seen a dashboard system, you'll see that the dashboards are approximately 42 inches high. Above that, we have either a tempered glass or an acrylic uh, shielding system that keeps the people from getting hit with a hockey puck. The materials that are used for that normally are an aluminum uh, extrusion. I have them stop on the grinding so we can talk a little bit. The aluminum 
is a profile that we designed, but we have uh, extruded by subcomponent manufacturers for us. The product comes as an aluminum extrusion. In the design that we need, we have another manufacturer that provides the cushions for us as an extrusion, and we own all the dies for these type of components. They deliver as raw material. We cut them to length for the specific job. We fit them with the cushions, and it goes out as part of the one of the subcomponents on the dashboard system, which is assembled by the uh, field personnel at Burley Rink Supply. So that's another item of the overall dashboard system. Over here, and you see there's lots and lots of small components that make up the rink system. Uh, unlike a manufacturer that just has an assembly line, they make the same component day after day after day. We're almost like a contract job shop that for each particular job we have to do a little bit of everything to make the whole process come together. Here what we're looking at are pre-assembled subheader manifolds for a subsoil heating system. And uh, what this does is very much like a foundation up north can have frost heave underneath it, so can an ice rink floor after the ice has been down after a period of time. And any time an ice rink is going to be installed for six months or more, we have to put in what we call a subsoil heating system, and that's what these headers are designed to do. What the subsoil heating system is is a hydronic fluid uh, heating system that has about a 20% glycol solution. It's heated to 50 degrees, and that is included with a loop of polyethylene tubing that goes underneath the whole rink floor and that keeps the soil beneath the rink from ever freezing. Above that we have insulation and then we actually have the rink piping system which you'll see upstairs as well. So more components that we put together for the overall ice rink floor. Over here we get more into the mechanical side of what it takes to build a rink and here you see a fully assembled pump skid. This pump skid is what we call pump stat. It's a variable flow rate system designed for circulating the coolant from the refrigeration system through the rink floor piping system. We take raw steel, cut the steel into a framing system, we buy the pumps from the specific pump manufacturers and we assemble it into a fully prepackaged pump skid, and com complete with electrical pressure stats, pressure transducers for our microprocessor control systems. It's fully assembled, so when this package gets to the job site, the installers merely have to install the piping to the suction and discharge manifolds, which are capped on both sides, as you'll see here, where the field installer has the capability to go left with the fluid or right with the fluid. Over here is a suction manifold on this particular device where equally with the fluid coming in, and the fluid coming in is a glycol solution, not uncommon to what you use in your automobile, like Prestone. It's basically an ethylene glycol based material. Fluid comes in through the different pumps up and out, and that's a constant loop system that works with the refrigeration for circulating the cooling and freezing the ice. The ice sheet is typically kept in an ice rink about 18 to 20 degrees. So we have a glycol solution that won't freeze until approximately minus 10 degrees. And we constantly circulate this fluid out and back at 18 degrees and that's what makes our ice sheet for us. Over here you'll see the pump skid being made. And it looks a little bit different without the paint on it. A coat of paint does wonders. As you can see all the raw materials that are put together to make a framing and a lot of these are pretty well standard for us. The reason that we have so many pumps has to do with energy efficiency in an ice rink. An ice rink has a variant of loads. Uh, most of the time we'll run 50% or less the total refrigeration capacity and considering that a typical ice rink has 200 horsepower of refrigeration in it, a twin rink could have 300 horsepower refrigeration in it. Energy costs are a primary concern in a facility and through smart design we can keep the cost of operation down dramatically. By putting in the four pumps like this, this is what we call a variable flow rate system and we minimize the amount of pump horsepower that we need to run and maintain the ice sheet depending on how many compressors are running in the refrigeration system. You can see the difference here.